Ladies and gentlemen, Dean Martin. When you're smiling, yeah, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles at you. Yeah, when you're laughing, yeah, laughing, the sun comes. Shining through, but when you cry, you bring on the rain. Stop your sigh, just be happy again. Keep on smiling, 'cause when you're smiling. Why can't I give some to you? Hey, Em! When skies are gray and you say you are blue, I'll send the sun smiling through. I want to be happy, but I won't be happy till I make you happy too. Fred. Sir, we found him. The perfect man to share our party's ticket with you. He'll make a great vice presidential candidate. He has a fine background, an enviable reputation in the Congress, and an outstanding war record. As your campaign manager, I strongly recommend that you choose him as your running mate. Would you like to meet him? He's right outside. Yes, yes, I would bring him in. Would you come in, please? Yes, just stand right here, please. Well, what do you think? Well, he makes a very good appearance. I mean, he seems solid and respectable. But I'll tell you, Fred, we need somebody who can appeal to the young people. Don't worry. We'll take care of that. <laughs> good. Good. But we must be careful. We mustn't lose the conservative vote. We'll take care of that, too. <laughs> what about the black vote? Just leave it to us. Oh, wait, wait. The Jewish vote. There's nothing to it. <laughs> oh. Women's lib vote. Coming right up. <laughs> And the housewife vote? You want it, you got it. <laughs> The Dean Martin Show. Starring... Gene Kelly, Gilbert O'Sullivan, A. Metford, Luke Jacoby, Tom DeLuise, Rodney Dangerfield, Nipsey Russell, and the Dingaling. Hi there. Oh, hi there. That's a fine-looking elephant you got there. Well, thank you. Uh, that's a... Uh... Nice-looking pet you've got there, too. <laughs> you know, uh, mine never forgets. Yeah, but mine has a lot more to remember. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that one, <laughs> Hey, what, what made you get an elephant for a pet? Well, there's no dogs allowed in my building. <laughs> oh, 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 I see. Where'd you get him? Well, he used to work at a circus. 
Mm -hmm. and he and... <laughs> he and five other elephants used to drive around in a Volkswagen. Oh, how'd you fit the six elephants in a Volkswagen? Three in the front, three in the back. In the back. <laughs> well, I must say, your pet looks very playful. Oh, she sure is. We have this great game, her and me. We have a huge ball of string. Boys, it ever fun. <laughs> you mean you play with a ball of string? No, we tie up my wife with it. <laughs> well, I gotta be going. I, I'll see you. Let's move out. Come on, Rover. <laughs> I tell you, now, tonight I'm going to go down in the dumps, you know? I mean, this afternoon, my wife cracked up the car again. I was out driving her. She told me she would make a U-turn. I'll tell you, the letter she made, you'll never find any of it. I tell you, with my wife, when she's behind the wheel, there's always something, you know? Oh, the last time I was out with her, I saw one guy. He gave her a good piece of his mind. It was right after she took a good piece of his leg. I don't know, I'll tell you the truth. My car, I got nothing but trouble, you know? I got plenty of tickets. In fact, I got so many tickets, I had to go downtown to the Motor Vehicle Bureau. I didn't even know it. My case, a court case, was to make a lawyer with me. I had no lawyer, but the court was very nice. They gave me a lawyer. My lawyer walked in, I recognized him. He was a waiter in my neighborhood, you know? <laughs> and I'll tell you, being a waiter had an effect on where this guy practiced law. I mean, I knew I was in trouble as soon as he walked in the courtroom. He carried his briefcase like this. <laughs> and during the whole trial, he kept filling the judge's glass with water. <laughs> When he walked out of the courtroom, I was really embarrassed. He put all the chairs on top of the tables. <laughs> I'll tell you all I mean is characters, you know? Oh, before I went into show business, I really met characters. I used to sell vacuum cleaners. I went door to door, you know? I remember I knocked on one door, a guy came out, must have been 50 years old. He said, my mummy isn't home. <laughs> I said to me, you're 50 years old. How can we depend on your mother? He said, I got no dada. <laughs> You've been a great crowd. Now drop it again. I'm always around, okay? You're beautiful people. <laughs> I tell you, Dean, it's always a pleasure to see you. Well, since I know you, you, you keep saying I don't get no respect, to. When did it all start? When did it hmm? start, huh? Yeah. I'll tell you the truth, Dina. It started the day I was born. <laughs> I mean, the day I was born, a doctor, he picked me up and smacked me. I found out the nurse, she got a few in two, you know. <laughs> you got two children, a boy and a girl. They, they give you respect, don't they? And sometimes I don't get respect from them either. Well, the other day I called my house, my boy answered the phone. I said to him, let me talk to mommy. I heard the kid say, mommy, it's daddy. Are you home? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, Dean, I don't understand it, you know? I mean, I treat my kids right. I give them love. And that's the most important thing. You got to give kids love, you know? Give them love. That's where it's at. Give them plenty of love. Yeah, tell I me, know. Dean, when you were a kid, did you get enough love? Well, I got plenty of love. My house was just full of love. Sometimes in my house, there was too much love. We had to open the windows to let some of the love out. <laughs> so I'll tell you, when I was a kid, I could have used some of the extra love you had, because I got no love at all. My brother got the love. No, because he was much neater than I was, you know. My room was always messed up. I didn't care. My brother's room was in order. His towels lined up neatly, combs, brushes, hair lotions all in the right place. So what did it mean? What is he today? He's an attendant in a men's room. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's embarrassing having a brother who works in the men's room. People say to me, hey, Rodney, what kind of work your brother do? I don't know what to say. You know? I tell him he's in business for himself, you know? <laughs> I say, yeah, what kind of business? Big business? I say, well, I'll put it this way. If he closed up tomorrow, a lot of people would suffer. Gene! Yeah. 
There's an article in this magazine you might be interested in. It's yeah. by, yeah, by a lady from the women's liberation movement. She says that men use dancing as an excuse to treat women as sex objects. Well, she may have a point there, Dean. I've, I've seen the way some guys carry on when they're dancing, and, you know, they think they can do anything they like to a girl as uh, long as they do it in tempo, you know? <laughs> but, you know, this article says that women ought to refuse to dance with men from now on. Now, wouldn't that be terrible? Why? Men don't need women to dance with. We don't? No. We could dance with anything, we, even inanimate objects. Oh, you mean married women? <laughs> no! No, Dean! I mean simple, everyday objects. Come over here, I'll show you. Say, we're in luck, Dean. A lot of them seem to have come stag. You mean you're actually gonna dance with these things? Not without asking. Oh. <laughs> May I have the pleasure? <laughs> Jean, see if she's got a squeegee for me. <laughs> Don't worry, Dean. We'll find you a partner. Oh, all right. Find me a partner? Yeah. Hey, we'll find... Hey, what about this bathtub? No. It's married. How can you tell she's married? It has a ring around it. <laughs> What's that? Well, when they're going to the powder room. Oh, why can't they ever go alone? <laughs> But I've never done this with a real live girl. Hey, we set this one out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you're glad to get out of the house. <laughs> Baby, we could make beautiful music together. You're too late. She's got a kid. <laughs> it just dawned on me. What? No wonder you're so good at this. You've had a lot of experience dancing with inanimate objects. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Here, be my guest. Singing in the rain What a glorious feeling I'm happy again Laughing at clouds Dark clouds above The sun's in my heart And I'm ready for Come on with the rain, have a smile on my face. I'm dancing. Singing in the rain. Hi, Mrs. Lane. Oh, hello, Carrie. Where's Mr. Kapopoulos? Is he out in the kitchen? Huh? No, he went out. He said he was going to a stylist to get a haircut. Oh, which one? He didn't say. Probably one of the ones on his head. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that, huh? Oh, but lovely flowers, Mrs. Lane. Yeah. Mr. Kapopoulos sent them to me. That's why I came over here, to see why. Wasn't there a note? Yeah, but it's very mysterious. I don't understand. Why would he send me flowers? It's not my birthday. He didn't have a baby. Maybe you're dead. <laughs> then he wouldn't have sent 
sent me this note. Well, what does the note say? Dear Mrs. Lane, please come to my apartment this evening to have dinner with me alone. Oh, why would he want to have dinner with me alone? He's seen me eat. <laughs> Flowers and a haircut. Dinner alone, you know. I think Mr. Kapopoulos wants to seduce me. He's going to ravage, molest, and brutalize me. Oh, what will I do, Karen? What will I do? What will I do? Maybe you shouldn't go. Who asked you? Uh, Hi, Mrs. What's doing? What's doing? Huh? We have a problem. Mrs. Lane thinks Mr. Kapopoulos is going to try and seduce her. Can you help? Well, maybe he doesn't need any. <laughs> put you over my knee and spank you. But it might cause brain damage. <laughs> you tell Mr. Kapopoulos I'll see him at his apartment at 8.30 tonight. All right, good night. Can I get you something, Mr. Martin? Well, just uh, coffee, Karen. I'm, I'm meeting somebody here. Hi. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi. I'm sorry I'm late, but it started to rain, and I had to go singing it. <laughs> Well, Karen, I'd like you to meet Gene Kelly. Really? Gene Kelly? The movie star? Tell me, how's your husband, Prince Rainier? <laughs> no, Karen, you're thinking of Grace Kelly. This is Gene Kelly. Oh, are you in a relation to Grace Kelly? Yeah, we're sisters. Could I have some coffee, too, please? Tell me, how do you like my new hairstyle? Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Kapopoulos, I don't really think it's you. To tell you the truth, neither do I. <laughs> Mr. Kapopoulos, meet Gene Kelly. <laughs> Put it there. Thanks. <laughs> I met you. Karen, I'm closing up the restaurant early tonight so you can go now. Oh, thank you. And by the way, Mrs. Lane was here and she said she'd see you at about 8.30. Goodbye, Mr. Kapopoulos. Goodbye, Mr. Martin. Goodbye, Miss Kelly. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Kapopoulos, what's this I hear about you and Mrs. Lane? Dean, mm -hmm. I've made a momentous decision. I'm going to ask Mrs. Lane to marry me. Say, that's great. What made you decide to take the plunge? Well, I've been a widower for 15 years. Do you know what it's like to come home night after night to an empty bedroom? Look who he's asking. <laughs> Mr. Kelly. Yes? Can't you help me? Well, as it so happens, I am just now rehearsing a script that has a proposal scene in it. Can I have a look at it? Maybe I can pick sure. up a couple of pointers. Because in this first scene, a girl comes to my apartment. As soon as I see her, I take her hand and I say, Oh, my dearest, you are the most beautiful, ravishing, alluring, most gracious creature my eyes have ever beheld. Gosh, if you were only Italian. <laughs> I think my worries are over. Oh, my dearest, you're the most beautiful, ravishing, alluring creature my eyes have ever beheld. Hello. Is this the police department? No, it's all right. I just want to be sure you're there in case I need you. Care to shake a leg, sweetheart? If you don't mind, I'd rather dance. I guess you can imagine why I asked you here tonight. Yeah, I can imagine. I want you in the worst way. Yeah, that's what I'm imagining. I'm desperately in need of someone. You know how it is. Mr. Kapopoulos, I've been a widow so long, I don't even remember how it was. What I'm trying to say is, I want you for my wife. But your wife is dead. What would she want with me? Mrs. Lane, you don't understand. I'm asking you to marry me. Marry you? You mean you didn't ask me here for indecent and immoral purposes? You're not going to molest and brutalize me? Of course not. You're all alike. <laughs> Mrs. Lane. Mrs. Kapopoulos.
chance All I want to do is dance Nipsey, you were uh, seeming a good mood today. Why not? This is a great job, being a barber. This is the only place in the world that a guy like me can start at the top. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look what it says right over here. It says uh, uh, that the Supreme Court has abolished uh, capital punishment and therefore all the prisons are tearing down their gas chambers. I never knew why they needed gas chambers to execute people anyway. Really? All they gotta do is bring them to Los Angeles, make them stick their heads out the window, and inhale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Air pollution is very, very bad in this city. Don't you think so, Gene? Oh, I don't know. I, I happened to bump into Mayor Yorty on the street the other day, and he told me, he said, uh, Gene, you mustn't believe everything you read. There is, in truth, uh, very little air pollution in Los Angeles. And what'd you say to him? I told the mayor, I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it really is bad. We're not only polluting the air, we're polluting everything. The earth, the water. Last week, I was at the beach. Getting a tan. Get swim. <laughs> Getting a tan. This is no man tan, this is tan, man. <laughs> Terrific. Uh, Dean, would what? you like me to tease your hair? Go ahead. Na 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 Get out of the way. Dean, I'm glad you dropped in. Wait, just a second. You got me. What are you kidding me? <laughs> okay. What? See, you're nearly choking. We oh. were talking about such things, the problem of ecology. Yeah. Did you know that in 20 years, people won't be able to drink water? Hey, how about that? I'm 20 years ahead of my time. <laughs> You know what we're talking about, Dean? How man is destroying his environment. You know what's happening? The flowers are dying. Yeah. What are we gonna do? We'll send them a wreath of people. <laughs> Everyone. You know, Don, Dean, Dom is right. Both of you are right in any case. Air pollution really is killing off natural vegetation. Pretty soon, there'll be no trees left in the country. Mm. Uh, you know what that means? Yeah, every night we'll have to walk our dogs to Canada. <laughs> Terrible. You know something? I believe we should get back to nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back to the purple mountain majesties and the fruited plain. <laughs> fruited plain? What is that? I think it's a charter flight for interior decorators. <laughs> No, no, it's no, no, joke, no, no, no joke. No, no. no. <laughs> Pollution is a very serious problem. Serious I'll tell problem. you. I'll tell you what's going to happen. And uh, before you know it, the earth is going to be black. Right on. <laughs> The worst pollution problem we have. It's not air and it's not water. It's people. People pollution. There are too many people in the world. Yeah, why don't they go back where they came from? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have to do, we have to educate the people about birth control. You know, I really believe this. Gene, do you believe in practicing birth control? Well, sure. How else are you gonna get good at it? <laughs> The problem is, it's the uneducated masses. They are having all the children. All of them. Uneducated, that's the key. The less they study math, the faster they multiply. <laughs> <laughs> 
Population explosion is really getting out of hand. Do you realize that in a single week, President Nixon was in China? Yes. You heard about that? Yes. yes. I mean, I read that in the papers. Yes. Do you know that in that single week, 1,400,001 babies <laughs> were born in that country? Now, I don't want to say nothing bad about our president, but you have to admit, it looks a little suspicious. <laughs> Thanks for looking in, but before I go, I'd like to announce the results of our college poll. We're trying to find out what the young people today are really thinking. So this week, we went to the University of Tennessee and asked the students the following question. Should a child be told where he comes from? 64 said yes, 35 said no, and 28,000 said yes, unless he happens to come from Philadelphia. <laughs> Thank you